sometimes it doesn't matter how hard you try, certain commandlets will not accept pipeline input. And today I want to kind of show you how to work around with that. This episode kind of falls in line with the episodes, I believe, 7 through 10, where I've discussed the PowerShell pipeline, how it works, and um, how to kind of work around some things. So we're going to go ahead and get the application event log. And let's see, we'll go ahead and get the newest two. We'll run this, and we'll go ahead and say that's you know what I wanted to wanted to get. However, I want to run this against say a group of computers. Now, in an ideal world, I could say query Active Directory. I have the Active Directory user and computers um, RSAT tools installed on this. So I'll go ahead and get AD computer. We'll go ahead and do filter star for this demo. I wouldn't do this in a production environment because it's will literally pull every computer object from Active Directory. But in my demo, I only have two. I'll run this and this will pull in the computer objects from Active Directory. And in an ideal world, I should be able to pipe this to get event log and that will get the event logs of these computers. But when I run this, I get an error and it says something along the lines, it cannot accept this input object because, well, there's no uh, parameters to bind to. And if I take a look at the help document for get event log, scroll up to the top here. Actually, I meant to type the full help. And I'll scroll up here all the way to the top. And I'll see all these different parameters. And just by looking at this, I probably want to bind to the computer name parameter. That would actually make sense. And if I go down to the definitions, I'll see the computer name parameter does not accept pipeline input. And if I actually scroll down further, there's a part here under inputs. It says inputs none. You cannot pipe input into this commandlet. So at this point, you're kind of stuck. There's really no way to do this. However, you can work around this. And if you notice, the computer name parameter said it accepted input an input type of string. But if I just run get AD computer filter, that actually provides an AD computer object. So in order to actually get to the to make that into a string, I can use the select command to do that. So I'll take a look at this again and I'm wanting to access this name property. So I'll go ahead and pipe that to the select object command line and use the parameter expand property and we'll expand the name property. And now if I run this, you'll see that outputs the names. And if I just want to double check to make sure that's a string, I can pipe that to git member or gm for short. And you'll see that if I scroll up here, it says the type is string. So now I got this into the format or the data type that it needs to be. I can now put this in the computer name prop. You put that into the computer name property. And how I can do this, there's a couple ways. For one, I'll just go ahead and cut this. And then I'll use parentheses and I'll paste that information in. Now, anything in parentheses are evaluated first. So, what this will do is get all the com computers. It'll pipe that to select object and it'll expand the property names, providing all the computer names. In a string in the string value type for the computer name parameter. And if I run this, this should work. What I actually like to do probably better is instead of putting all this in one line, it gets really hard to read. What I'll do is I'll put that into a computer variable and then provide the computer name or the computer variable right there, and that will do the same thing, and it's a little bit more readable. And there you go. So that's kind of a quick and easy way to work around um, commandlets not accepting pipeline input. You can either save it to a variable and then provide that as an argument, or you can use parentheses around to actually evaluate 
you know, whatever you need to evaluate. So I hope you, hope you learned something today and thank you for watching.